I want to quickly introduce how to work with an API endpoint. There's a lot of concepts to cover, so this might go over really quickly. I'm going to skim over a few things. I'm going to try to mention a few keywords and then, you know, go into like how to do it. First of all, API stands for Application Programming Interface. It is the way that two machines can connect to each other and then have one machine get data from another. So an example of this is if we want to access uh, like NASA's picture, astronomy picture of the day, and we want to get this exact image. But instead of going to this browser URL that is for human consumption, we just want the data. Um, and it might look something like, like this as raw data. Instead of NASA giving us individually a username and login so that we write an SQL query to their database, we just say we want to go to the API endpoint and they have a URL for that. You know, it's like a door that's left open. You go there and get the information in text form. One of the pro, I guess, advantages of this is that we don't need all this HTML to format the page, we just need the text itself and uh, the image address. Um, so NASA and a bunch of other websites has this, um, they have this like library of API endpoints available for people to use. Uh, what we're gonna look at is this astronomy picture of the day. They've got a whole bunch of others. I'm not even gonna look at it. This one um, is one of the most popular and it's also pretty simple, so I think it's like a really good example to start with. What they've provided here in the documentation is the endpoint that you would go to make a request. HTTP stands for Hypertext Protocol. So maybe we could look at that up real quick. Um, if you remember the network diagram from one of the lectures, we went over how there's a bunch of different layers uh, in, in a network. HTTP is the application protocol. So it kind of just says like, here's all the content that a user might be able to access, you know, one computer to another. You can have different kinds of requests. You can make a uh, get request, or you can make a post request to send information like if you were to submit stuff from a form. Uh, so there's different request methods. We're just going to go with the most basic, which is get, which means just retrieve data. Don't even worry about the other ones right now. Um, what we would do is go to the URL that they say is available. And then um, they say that you do have to include a certain key so that they know that you are a valid consumer of their information. And they describe up here that the demo key is for guest use and you have certain limits. So if you were to surpass the limits that they've set for each 24 hour period and each 60 minute period, um, then you might wanna like sign up for a key and, and like go about it that way. But for now, because we're just quickly previewing this. We're not going to go over the limits, so I'm just going to use this demo key. So they give you an example of the base query that you can give, which is the endpoint address plus the API key. If we were to load that in a browser, we're going to see the raw data show up like this. Now it depends on which browser, exact browser you have. Um, I think, you know, Chrome will load it like this by default. And I think Safari has other things. Uh, Firefox has this nice JSON interface that will parse it out for you. If you don't have Firefox, or if you're trying to figure out how to work with the different query parameters and like what parameters to put into there, then you can use this other technology called a request builder. Back in the day, I used a product called Postman and it has since then become a desktop app and I don't feel like installing it. So I found this open source one that is accessible in the browser. It's Postwoman. I have that here. 
Um, the API endpoint that I want to access, I've put here, and I am using the request method. So I just leave that as is, and I have the API key. Um, so now, if I click send and um, see what happens, then I'm hoping to be able to get the, uh, the API endpoint. So let's see what happened and why we couldn't get that. There we go. Okay. So you see how like I fixed that one um, slash and then now, now their server accepts my request. It responds with status 200, which means it's okay and good. And the content type, which is JSON. JSON is JavaScript object notation. And that is just like a Python dictionary in that it's got key and value pairs. So you got the key on the left, and then you've got the values on the right, and just a bunch of key value pairs in this thing called JSON blob. Um, and these are, I guess, keys are um, separated by the commas. And you can have a key correspond to a list of values as well. We don't see that here. This is just a very basic JSON object. So um, I think much easier to start from in learning how to work with JSON. Now you see here there is headers and parameters. We're going to ignore headers for now and stick with parameters. Going back to the documentation from NASA, we saw that there were different parameters that we can look for. Let me describe a little bit uh, what is needed. If we go back to their web page with astronomy picture of the day, we have today's current day, which is the 31st, and they say, you know, what the date is there. But we can go back into their history and see what was the previous day. So I think if we go to the left arrow, we can see um, yesterday's image, March 30th, day before that, uh, March 29th. So let's, let's try to construct where we have March 29th. And let's see what they say to get that. You want to give the parameter date, which works. The query parameters also work like key value pairs. So we have the date, which is the key that we want to use. So we use a request builder to say we have a new key date. And it says the format has to be year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, date, date. And that corresponds very closely to most SQL database date formats. So it was year, 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 year. So let's say we want the 29th. So that is of this year, 2020, March 03, dates 29. So now let's see, um, you know, back to the 29th. It says uh, the date will be March 29th. And it's going to be titled 212 hour exposure of Orion. If you note here before I click send, we still have today's um, JSON blob, which has today's date. And then it also has like the stuff for today. Now if I click send, we're going to see that it will get the 29th. And then it also has the title a 212 hour exposure of Orion. So this is how we would get a specific date. Um, the other option that they have from the documentation is just uh, high definition, true or false. Um, by default, they give you both. So, you know, we could see what happens. I'm going to guess false is the default. So if we say true as the value that we're getting, let's see what happens. We have here 10 lines. And if we click send again, okay, it looks like it didn't change. Um, all right, so those are the only options available for this. Um, and that is just like a quick preview of how this works. If you want to try a different API from a different website, then you would just, you know, put that in there. Um, and then if it needs authentication, then you would just like select that. And this way you can then see what the parameters are supposed to look like. 
if you look here, like going back to what we had of March 29th, you can see that while this builder gave you the key value pairs and like these really nice text boxes, it constructed for you the ampersand to, to denote like different pairs in the URL. And it would then give you the, or sorry, construct for you the key value pairs like that. If I were to copy this part that I'm interested in um, into the browser of where I had the uh, initial preview, you'll see that it also will update. So now we have the 29th, and then if I specify today, it'll give you March 31st. Um, so it, in a URL, you can specify key value pairs as well. Um, so those are the, the fundamental things to know. Um, the other thing to look up is uh, the status codes. And so we have success, um, 200 is okay. That's a good one to see. If we see that in the request builder, that's, that's great. 